When we last left off, we had created a starfighter, some lighting, uh, added a skybox, and some directional lighting to our environment. Now we're going to go in and we're going to add some items into space so that it makes more sense as we're moving around and we can see things more easily inside that environment. Um, it's great to be able to navigate through space, but if you don't have anything to compare your movement to, you really can't tell that you're moving. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to add some asteroids to be shot at inside the game. To do that, I went to the Asset Store on the Unity website, and there I found, under the Art Packages, several things that I could use. The most important thing for my asteroids was the Shantytown rock formations, so I just simply selected that and downloaded it. Fortunately, these were free for what I wanted to do, so I was able to just simply click on Import and download it. The only problem that I found with these rock formations is that they did not have a bottom to any of them. They were made to be placed on the ground and to save on culling and um, poly count, they just simply didn't put a bottom. So I went into 3ds Max and added a bottom to it. Now I'm able to import these objects into my environment. And there you've got Rock Blob 4, which is going to be my main asteroid inside this environment. I'm going to go ahead and move that over here to the, the environment. And I need to apply the texture to that Rock Blob. So I'm going to go ahead and pull some textures over here into my project as well. Uh, those will take a second to import. Okay, they're now imported. And here in my textures I've got the diffuse uh, texture. I'll drag that over to my rock blob with my rock blob selected over here. And you, so you can see it's been applied. I need to make that a little bit larger. It's currently quite small inside the environment. And we'll place it someplace where we can actually find it inside the environment and that should work pretty good. Let's scroll in. Um, there's our, my ship. Let's go over to the rock blob. There it is. And there we go and it's inside the environment and we can then go from there. Now this is currently just simply a piece of rock floating in space. But of course I'm going to want more than one asteroid inside of the environment. To handle that multiple asteroid type situation what I need to do is create a prefabrication will allow me to be able to easily institute and uh, call additional rock blobs from within the game. So I'm going to create a new folder for all of my prefabs that are going to be used inside the environment. So I'll name that prefab. And I'm going to create a new prefab inside the prefab folder to hold my rock blob. and I'm going to name it Asteroid. All right, so we've created the prefab Asteroid. Now, Asteroid doesn't currently have anything associated with it. To associate the rock blob with the texture that I've created with the Asteroid, I just simply need to drag it from my hierarchy over here to the Asteroid, and it will now apply everything to the Asteroid inside the, uh, from the rock blob. So you can see here now it's got everything associated with it and it's ready to go. So what I'm going to do is delete it then from my hierarchy. There we go. And now I've got asteroid. And I can add these asteroids anywhere inside the environment that I want to. So I'm going to just simply drag it in and drop it. Um, that's not where I want it. As you can see the exposition came out at 3000. If you'll remember our skybox was set at 3000 by 3000 by 3000 so that would put it outside the limits of the game. So let's change that to a smaller number. And there's one. Now I'm going to back up a little bit inside my environment. And then let's put some more asteroids in the environment. Again, watching your numbers here. Place that at a slightly smaller location. Maybe we'll put an asteroid in front of the ship. That's always a nice thing so that we can actually see it inside the environment and maybe one or two more just for grins and that should do it okay well we've got four in there let's go ahead and put five there we go okay and let's go back to our ship main camera currently I cannot see any of the asteroids and I really want to be able to see them whoa that one's way outside of our 
area of control, isn't it? So let's pull that back inside the environment and change over to our Y view. Again, this is outside the environment from what we want it to be. So let's pull it back in. There, that should have it back inside. Now it looks like quite a few of them are outside of our environment. Need to be pulled back in. And if we get them inside the black area, we should be okay then. But we can check by just changing the X, Y, and Z on each one of these and making sure, yep, that one's outside. Don't mind hunting for them, but if they're outside the skybox, we'll never find them. Okay, now we've got them all back inside there. I still don't have one in front of my ship, though. Okay, now I have an asteroid that is in view. If I go to game view, you can see they've got an asteroid there, another asteroid over there. So that makes things a little bit easier. Now, of course, in gameplay, the size of the asteroid is critical. Of course, we can adjust the asteroid size very easily by just simply going over here to the scale on the asteroid. And currently I've got the scale set at 1. If I wanted to make a, all the asteroids a little bit larger, I could do that very easily by just simply adding a little value to it. Now I've, they're all 1.5, so about a meter and a half across. Of course, we can make them even larger if we wanted to. And this does affect all the asteroids when I change the asteroid prefab so that they're all affected all at once, which makes it real nice. That also makes it very easy if I want to add an animation to it or if I want to um, cause all of them to be affected by one piece of script. That makes it very easy to apply to all of them. Next thing we need to do is add some bullets to our game so that we're able to affect everything at once or be, to be able to shoot at our asteroids. The next thing we need to do is add some bullets to our starship so that we're able to fire. This is going to be done very simple in this particular environment. All I'm going to do is go to the Create go to sphere and there you can see I've created a simple sphere I'm going to go in and rename this as bullet and again bullet will become a prefab but we need to go ahead and get it created first let's create a, a uh, material for the bullet so I'll click on new material and call it's going to be the material for bullet so I'm going to name it M bullet and place it in the materials folder so that it's easy to locate later should I need to there's in bullet and let's just go ahead and for right now set a color to bullet I'll make it a reddish a, a dark red bullet it can fire through the space and then we're just simply going to apply that material for bullet onto bullet and as you can now see when I select bullet it is now showing as that shade of color so again I'll go back to my prefab folder click on create prefab rename this as bullet and I'm going to go ahead and add the extension prefab to it just so that I have very clear in my mind that this is a prefabrication then I can drag the bullet over to the bullet prefab and everything shows inside that environment you might want to adjust let, let's go to the bullet itself I did set the scale or I haven't adjusted the scale of the bullet yet in my bullet prefab so I may need to do that let's jump back to the scene yes you can see that my bullet is currently much larger than my ship so let's drop that down to say 0.3 there still a little bit larger than what I'd like it to be so let's drop it down again maybe 0.1 that's a little better still probably a little larger but I'm using this as a temporary holding for my environment so it shouldn't be a problem. Drag our bullet back onto the bullet prefab and there we've got all the changes that we made to the bullet in the prefab. I can now remove the bullet from my environment so we'll go ahead and delete it. We need to go through and do a few things to the items in our environment. First of all the asteroid that we created needs to have the ability to be interacted with by physics in the environment. So what we need to do is add physics to the asteroid and that's to make it a rigid body so that it's impacted by the environment. So component physics rigid body with asteroid selected. And you can see it adds rigid body to the asteroid. We need to turn off gravity since we're not we're in space we're not really worried about gravity. We need to turn on is kinematic and collision detection is set to work. Need to do the same thing for our bullet prefab component physics rigid body 
and again turn off gravity turn on is kinematic so starfighter selected we're going to turn it into a rigid body as well so rigid body again turning off gravity turning on is kinematic so that it can properly be interacted with okay so we've got everything turned into a something that can be interacted with by the environment and we're able to we're able to see everything when we go to our camera view we can see some asteroids in that environment so the final step is going to be to add the ability to shoot and move inside the environment we've now got all the elements physically in the space now we need to make them all interactive and make the game playable but before we do that let's do one last thing I want to go ahead and publish what we've got to the uh, Android phone that I've got I've got a Google Nexus one here and I want to go ahead and publish everything that I've created to the phone and just simply do a spot check with what's happening with the environment to do that I'm going to go to file build settings and as I mentioned before we needed to go ahead and get some things configured for the environment uh, before we can actually publish them one thing that I want to do is add a, a splash screen so I've created a splash screen in my environment and I'm going to just simply drop that into the materials here real quickly it's just a simple uh, thing created with Photoshop for as a splash screen so that people can, will know you know here's space shooter the object of the game is shooting asteroids as we zip through space so we'll go back to the file build settings Android is selected and I'm going to go to player settings let's set the uh, resolution and presentation is already set to landscape the splash image is going to be my image that I my space shooter so I'll drag that over there now that will automatically pop up onto my device um, other settings you do need to go ahead and set a bundle identifier now the bundle identifier if you've programmed in Java any length of time you'll be used to this it's just simply the reverse URL for your website so you would put com dot your website dot then the name of the project so in my particular case it's com dot Burton's media group period space shooter and then we're able to move on from that section go to the publish settings you do need to set up a keystroke so I'm going to tell it to create a new keystroke for this give it a password for it to work with you don't have to worry about a key or a marketing license at this point because this is just simply a debug of it and we're just simply going to test it on your on the phone after you've got all of this set and if everything is correct you can click on build and run with your phone already plugged into the device through your USB port and if you've got everything configured correctly you should be able to compile and not getting any errors down here at the lower side of your unity engine it'll go through fairly quickly this isn't a very big project and be able to archive and create a package that can be distributed to your phone and there we have it it is launched on my phone I can see asteroids in the environment um, we're ready then to go ahead and start adding movement to the game itself so the last thing we're going to do on this little project is add the ability for the ship to be able to move around in space we're going to use the tilt controls that are available um, actually I'm going to use some pre-existing scripts that have already been created on the Star Trooper uh, tutorial that is on the Unity website so I'm going to start with just simply pulling four scripts over from that particular project I'll go to select my scripts here and then we're going to do an import asset and pull in and as you can see I've already gone to the place uh, a folder Star Trooper assets scripts and I'm going to pull in the, con the, the first four constrained motion missile launcher missile trajectory and player controls we could spend time going through and coding everything that needs to go with this but they've already done a fine job with these scripts and I'm not into recreating the wheel when something's already been done very well um, I do recommend that you play the Star Trooper game and get an idea of how the assets work 
Okay, so we got all four in there. We need to create a simple object for one of these controls and also associate them with the Starfighter. To associate them with the Starfighter, we need to associate the player controls, the missile launcher, and the constrained motion all with Starfighter. To do that, we just simply drag it over to Starfighter, each one of them, one at a time. And now that they're all associated with Starfighter, you'll see all of the scripts show up inside the inspector when you select your Starfighter. Uh, as you can see here, you've got the player control, uh, the turn controls. The turn speed on this is a little high for my environment. I'm going to drop that speed down to 1 instead of 10. And that Again, this is all in units except for your turns. Your turns and tilts, are, of course, are in degrees. Um, we've also got a missile launcher, which we need to associate a missile with, which in this case is my bullet prefab. So I'll go to Starfighter, back here to Starfighter, click on Bullet Prefab, and drag that over to the missile launcher so that it'll now shoot a bullet when it is launched. Uh, the only other thing we need to do is create an object for the GUI speed element, and that's just simply going to Game Object Create Empty. We'll name it Speed, set it at a Y of 1, give it a scale of 0, 0, 1, and then go back to our Starfighter and associate the speed item that we just created with the GUI speed element, and that's used inside the environment. Um, we should be just about ready. The only thing that we haven't yet added to this is an ex explosion effect, and when we have a collision with an asteroid, but with just what we've created here, we are able to export to the phone and be able to see everything as it runs inside the environment. So we're going to do that first to make sure all of this works correctly. And just go back to our build settings, or you can just simply click build and run. Now as soon as this is done building, I'll be able to pull it up on my phone and show that through the screen view as well. As we tilt, you can move around in the environment. Well, I wasn't completely happy with how that appeared inside the environment. Um, it really didn't give me enough reference space. So what I'm going to do is go to the main camera. And I'm going to scooch that back a little bit so that I can see the spaceship in front of me. And that'll give me a little bit more perspective inside the environment. I'm also going to go to the Starfighter itself and shrink it down in size so it doesn't take up so much of the screen. Drop it down to, oh, let's try 0.75 in all of its attributes. And that should make it a little bit smaller area inside the game environment and should make it a little bit easier to work with. Okay, I'm going to publish this and then we'll go from there. Well, hopefully you found this tutorial very useful, and uh, we'll be producing more videos on how to develop with Unity in the near future.